In this video, we will show you how to set up a ProSoft Technology PLX30 Ethernet IP to PROFINET device gateway to connect Ethernet IP controllers to PROFINET controllers. The PLX31 EIP PND emulates a PROFINET slave device, allowing a Rockwell processor to share data with a PROFINET enabled Siemens controller or General Electric controller. Ethernet IP enabled Schneider Electric controllers can also use this gateway. The PLX31 offers fast, consistent data transfer as well as diagnostic data so that when things go wrong, you will have the data you need right there in your controller tags. In this video, we'll cover assigning the gateway an IP address, configuring the gateway in ProSoft Configuration Builder, connecting a PROFINET controller to the gateway using Siemens Totally Integrated Automation, and finally, we'll add the gateway as an I.O. connection in RS Logix 5000 or Studio 5000. Let's begin. First, we'll open up ProSoft Configuration Builder, or PCB for short. Right-click on the New Module in the tree view and select Choose Module Type. And in the Product Line Filter, select PLX30. And from the drop-down menu, choose the PLX31 EIP PND and click OK. Now we'll assign an IP address for the gateway. Expand PLX31 EIP PND and go down to Ethernet Configuration. Right click and choose Configure. I'll change the IP address to 10.1.2.242. You obviously will want to use an IP address on your subnet. Also we can change the net mask and gateway and once this is done, click OK. Even though the module has a default IP address that's not on my subnet, we can still download to it by giving it a temporary IP address using our ProSoft Discovery service. Right-click on the module and choose Download from PC to Device. And when this opens, choose Browse Devices. In the new window, you should see your EIP PND gateway Right click on that and choose IP address. Type in the address you entered earlier and for me it's 10.1.2.242 and click OK. Now make sure that the IP address is in the Ethernet field and choose download to permanently set the IP address. Now we'll configure the PROFINET portion of the gateway. The first section which is PND is configuring the PROFINET device port and the second, the module map, is configuring how much data will be exchanged between this module and the PROFINET controller. So expand PND and then click on PND. And here you can see the input and output for the byte offset inside our database. A byte is half a word, so the input byte offset of 4000 is word 2000 matching up to our EIP output of 2000 and the output of 0 matches our EIP input of 0. Also, if you have to correct any byte swapping for the entire PROFINET network, you can do so here. I don't need to, so I'll leave all of this as default. Next, click on PND module map, right click and choose configure, add a row, edit that row, here is where we'll host and receive specific amounts of data for the PROFINET controller. Let's say a PROFINET controller needs to send us 32 bytes of data and receive 32 bytes of data. Just click on Module in Slot and from the drop down list choose Input 32 bytes. If you notice your bytes or words are scrambled, you might need to swap bytes or words for this particular module. And we can do that by using the swap code here. Once completed, click OK. Now we'll add a second row, edit that row, and this time we'll get output 32 bytes. Click OK and click OK again to close the window. To map in the status data that I referred to earlier, we just need to expand common net, then double click on data map. Add a row, then edit that row. The only status I'm concerned with on the PROFINET side is the state of the connection. So we'll map in form address 13006. 
to address 2250 with a length of 1. This will let us know if our module loses communication with the Profinet controller. Next up, we'll open Siemens Totally Integrated Automation Software, or TIA. We'll use this to configure the Profinet port on the PLX31 gateway. Begin by creating a new project. Give it a name and make sure your path is good, and then click Create. We'll go to the project view, and from here we can install our GSD, or General Station Description file, which will identify the device for the S7 controller. Just locate the file you want to use and click Import, and once it's done, we get a message that the installation was completed successfully. You can close the window, and now we'll add a new device. This will be the Profinet device that we're connecting to. In this case, we'll be connecting to an S7 1511 Profinet controller. So I'll click OK. This will bring the controller into our project tree view. In the device view, we have a rack with the controller in slot one. So I'll go to the network view tab. And here I'll right click on the controller and select properties. Under Ethernet addresses, scroll down and enter the IP address of the Siemens controller, and we'll enter the router address as well. Once that's done, click on the Hardware Catalog tab over on the right side of the interface here. Here we'll drill down and locate our PLX31 gateway and drag and drop it into our network view with the controller. We'll connect them and then right click on the gateway and select properties. And this is where we'll assign the IP address of the gateway to use in the project. And this will be the same IP address that we set for the gateway back in PCB which is 10.1.2.242. So once I've done this, I can go save the project and we'll right click on the gateway again and select device configuration. Now select the hardware catalog tab over on the right again, and I'm going to drag an input 32 byte node from the catalog list into the device overview window. I'll also grab an output 32 byte node and drag that over as well. We'll close the hardware catalog and then switch over to the network view. Right click and select assign device name. Once the window opens, we'll refresh the devices in the network. You should see the Profinet controller and the Profinet device. The status will show an exclamation point. Select the gateway in the list and click Assign Name. The exclamation points will change to check marks, indicating that the two pieces are now connected. We'll close this window. Right click on the processor and select Download to Device. On the download window, use the drop down menus to select your interface information and the subnet you'll connect to. TIA will connect to the processor and we'll click the load button to compile our configuration and download it to the controller. Once this is complete, back in the network view, right click on the processor and select Go Online. Our connection between the S7 processor and the PND port on the gateway is now up and running. Now we'll jump back to PCB to configure the connection parameters for our gateway to the Rockwell processor so that the processor will see us as connected I.O. Expand EIP Class 1 connection under the PLX31 EIP PND and let's take a look at connection 1. 
you'll notice that the default is 248 words per input and output. And the starting point is word zero and 2000 of our database. We'll leave these values at the default. Now we need to download the configuration to the module. So right click on the module name and choose download from PC to device. Make sure that the proper IP address is selected and choose download. Now, before we can add the gateway to the Rockwell processor, we'll have to add the PLX31's EDS file to your list in RS Links. This is just a simple text file that will allow the Rockwell configuration tools to identify the gateway. Open up RS Links and choose Communications and select RS Who. From here, expand Ethernet IP and find the EIP PND gateway. Right click on it and choose Upload EDS from Device. Follow the prompts to finish uploading the EDS file. Now we can add this module to our version 20 or newer RS Logix 5000 or Studio 5000 project. Right click on the Ethernet icon and choose a New Module. From here, uncheck all vendors, scroll down and check ProSoft Technology. Now choose your module and click Create. We'll give the module name, the same IP address that we entered in PCB, If you click on the Connections tab, you'll see where you can change the RPI times if you need faster or slower data. Back on the General tab is where you add multiple connections to the gateway for your Rockwell processor by clicking on the Change button under Module Definition. From the drop-down window under Connection 1, select Additional Connections. I'll set up three connections here. It's possible to add up to eight connections. Once you're finished, click OK and click Close to exit the window. Under Controller Tags, we can see all the tags these I.O. connections have created. Now you have an Ethernet IP device that you can monitor right from your Rockwell processor. And yes, it will show a yellow triangle if it loses connection under I.O. configuration. And that's how you configure a PLX31 EIP PND gateway to connect a Rockwell Ethernet IP controller to a Profinet I.O. controller. If you have any questions or would like more information about the PLX31 EIP PND, use this link to go to its product page or feel free to give us a call. Happy training!